My name is Paul Davies and I'm director of something called the Beyond Center for Fundamental Concepts in Science at Arizona State University. And we tackle the big questions of existence, things like what happened before the Big Bang and how did life begin and is uh, time travel possible? And one of the biggest questions that we can ask is, are we alone in the universe? During my career, the opinion on that has swung back and forth. So when I was a student uh, here in London, the prevailing view was that life is so stupendously complex and so very special that it could only have arisen once in the universe. It must have been a dream run of chemical reactions that turned non-life into life. Uh, this is uh, so improbable that even given the vastness of the universe out there, the chances of it happening again somewhere else were infinitesimal. But now, uh, today, it's fashionable to say that the universe is teeming with life. And the curious thing is that we have no evidence one way or the other. And so the search for life beyond Earth really divides into two extremes. One of these is just looking for microbes, for example, on Mars or somewhere else in the solar system, uh, or looking for maybe trace gases in the atmospheres of extrasolar planets that might be telltale signs of biological activity. And then at the other end of the spectrum is the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Uh, and that is based on the idea that if life gets going, uh, then there's at least a chance that some sort of advanced life will appear, a technological society, and that they may be out there trying to communicate with each other and communicate with us. And a good way of doing that is with radio. So for about 60 years, a heroic band of radio astronomers has been sweeping the skies with radio telescopes, hoping to just stumble across a, a message from some extraterrestrial civilization. And I've been a strong supporter of that effort, but I'm extremely skeptical that it's going to work. Part of the problem is that if there's a civilization, say a thousand light years over there, they'll see Earth as it was a, a thousand years ago. Uh, they uh, may deduce that there's intelligent life here. They may see the Great Wall of China or signs of agriculture. They may guess that any millennium soon we would have radio technology. But it would make no sense for them to be beaming messages directly at us until they knew that we were on the air and they won't know that till our first radio signals that leak out into space uh, reach them in about another 900 years. Meanwhile, what can we do? We don't actually have to get a message from ET saying, we are here, you are not alone. It's enough for us to detect some unmistakable signs of non-human technology. And so this has become known as a search for techno signatures. It could be that in its four and a half billion year history, the solar system has been visited, uh, not necessarily by flesh and blood alien beings, that's a bit of a stretch, but their technology, a probe, say, or some sort of robotic system that might have been here. And then the question is, would we know? Supposing uh, the solar system were visited 100 million years ago, what would survive that duration that we could go look for? Uh, the answer is, well, not very much, but there are some things. Nuclear waste, for example, would survive for much longer than that. If we found a chunk of plutonium on Mars or on the Moon, uh, we would know that we're not alone. We can certainly look at photographic evidence, for example, of the Moon's surface. Things on the Moon would remain inert for a very long period of time. We could see if there are any unusual objects at certain special points of the solar system, like the so-called Lagrange points, where the Earth and Sun's gravitational field balances out. Uh, and then there are curious objects which the astronomical community has dubbed lurkers. These are small asteroids which are lurking by the Earth in the sense that they share Earth's orbit around the Sun, and so they're keeping pace with us as we orbit the Sun. The question of whether or not we're alone in the universe is a really profound one that I'm deeply interested in, because if it turns out that uh, the emergence of not just life, but intelligence, uh, thinking beings who can come to understand the universe and make technology, uh, then this shows that there is a sort of inbuilt scheme of things that the universe has not only engineered its own observation, but it's engineered its own comprehension. Uh, and that's a very profound thought. Uh, that means that we would live in a universe that we could truly call our home. And if you want to know more about this fascinating topic, then do buy my latest book, What's Eating the Universe? 
It's all about life, the universe and everything.